Hello and welcome back to the course on blockchain. Today we're going to be talking about orphaned blocks. It's going to be a more of a show and tell tutorial. We'll use the blockchain.com or blockchain.info information for uh, examples and we'll learn from there. So let's go to blockchain.com and then go to stats here. And here at the bottom you'll see a option called orphaned blocks. So go ahead and click on that and this will show us some uh, recent orphan blocks and that will help us understand what's going on. So what can we see here? Well, first thing is how do we read this diagram? This diagram is basically our blockchain, but vertically going from, you know, like this is the most recent block and then going down or actually not the most recent block, most recent block somewhere here. And then the blockchain just keeps going like down and so this this dot 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 means like they skipped a lot of blocks in here because they were not interesting for this specific um, analysis. There they weren't any orphan blocks. So you can only see the orphan blocks here. But essentially, this is our whole blockchain except for the parts that are dot dot dot. So you can see here four nine seven three seven three four nine seven eight seventy. So they skipped from here to here. They skipped about five hundred blocks. Everything was normal, and then an orphan transaction happened. So they showed us how they dealt with it, what happened there, and not how they dealt with just what happened to it. And then again, dot, dot, dot. So you can see 497870, 4978711. These are consecutive, then dot, dot, dot. Then these are always consecutive, then dot, 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 and so on. So that's how to read this chart and it keeps going on. So you can like scroll to the bottom and then you can go to the next page and it'll show you more if you like. So let's have a look at an orphan transaction. What is going on here? Well, let's look at the most recent one that we have in this example. Over here, we had block 503948. Everything, you know, like was going okay, fine in our blockchain. Blocks were being added one after the other. So before that was 947, before that was 946, 945, and so on. And 948 was added by btc.com, that mining pool found this block. This is how many transactions are inside that block. That's, that's the time when they added it. Okay. And so then what happened? Well, after that, as you can see, um, 18 minutes passed, so a bit more than 10. Uh, it's 10 is on average, so sometimes more or less because it's a, it's a statistical thing to find the hash anyway. So you can see here, 18 minutes passed, so 2328 on the 12th of January. What happened is at 2328.07, GB miners found the next block but at the same time at 23:28:33, which is how many seconds is that that gives us like 26 26 seconds later slush pool remember that blo that mining pool in czech republic they also found a block it's the same time so um they both claimed it to be block 503949 and they um said you know this had this main transaction this had me this main transaction already it shows you that they're not identical blocks simply by seeing that they have different number of transactions in them and we discussed this in module one of the course of what happens when this situation occurs well what happens is uh at that point in time two versions of the chain will exist so gb miners with this block will continue trying to grow that chain and slush pool with this block will continue trying to grow, grow that chain. So the the um, nodes in the network which are close to slush pool will have a, will have been relayed this block. Nodes in the network that are close to GB miners will have been relayed this uh, this block. And so we have two competing networks or two competing chains at the same time. And what happens from there is that okay, then whoever builds on the next block, they then um, like eventually remember the golden rule the longest chain wins so whoever builds the next block first they will take over the chain unless they build on the next block at the same time again and then it'll be whoever builds the next block so basically whoever has more hash power or in whoever uh in whichever chain out of the two competing chains has the highest hash rate will win eventually and remember that's our solution back going back to the Module one, when we talked about by the Byzantine general problem, and then we talked about the consensus protocol and blockchain that this way, by structuring a consensus protocol this way, we get a consensus as, as long as we have 51% of the hash rate on one of the or, the or the other side. 
And that's exactly what happens. And as you can see here, the red X means that this block eventually lost that, or that this block mined by slash pool ended up to be in the uh, losing chain. So what happens then? That's the interesting part, right? So this block gets stays and then it keeps growing. At least this dot, dot, dot keeps growing into the chain. Uh, chain continues evolving. This one stops. What happens? Well, all of these transactions that were in the block, they get released back into the mempools. They go back into the mempools of, uh, of whatever nodes accepted this block. Eventually, this, this chain wins. And then, so these, these guys have to release the transaction back. Maybe some of these transactions were amidst these transactions that were listed here. Very likely because miners select transactions by the highest fees. So the highest fees transactions would have been here and here. So they would have been released out of here in back into the mempools of the nodes that accepted this block. And then right away, this block would, uh, be, uh, would be, so all of the, all of the nodes in this chain would switch to this block. And then right away, the transactions that were here and were are actually here as well. So they would go back into the mempool and then they would go right out of the mempool. They would exit the mempool because they're in that, uh, in that block that actually turned out to be good. But some transactions, some transactions will be released back into the mempool and they will stay in the mempool because they were not in this block as well. And so what that means is that it's always important to wait at least for a couple of confirmations before de before considering your transaction to be successful. And by confirmation, we mean several blocks on top of the current block. So, if you have if your transaction ended up in one of these blocks, uh, if you had if you don't wait for several blocks to be built upon it, then what will happen is you might let's say. If you received money from somebody to sell your bicycle, they sent you money and you give them the bicycle and then it turns out that your block was not valid. So because because this happened. And so your that transaction gets released back into the mempool and they get their money back and they keep the bicycle because now you can't get hold of them or something like that. So if that happens, that that's the called the double spend problem. And we'll talk more about that in uh, the coming tutorial on uh, the 51% attack. But for now, that's what's important to note. So usually the rule of thumb is to wait for six confirmations. So wait for six confirmations before you consider your transaction to be successful. Uh, because otherwise it might end up a double spend problem. And so here, let's see what have happened here. So we also had a, um, uh, what's it called? An orphaned block. This is called the orphan block. Um, Let's have a look more. So uh, quite a few orphan blocks all over the place. So I was looking for an example. Look at the times. So you can see that this one was uh, mined later. So this one was mined earlier. This one was mined later. But if you look here, um, this one was mined later. So this one is actually mined first. 26 minutes 37 this one was mined at 26 minutes 45 54 seconds so it really doesn't matter who mined it first in terms of time wise right it re what matters is who has the longest chain in the end which block results in the longest chain in the end that's what matters at the end of the day um yeah so there we go that's how orphan blocks work so the main takeaway from today is um, this can happen it's normal, it's part of the experience, part of the blockchain setup, and it happens usually because there's a time lag, because when this block was mined, it took more than, you know, it took more than 26 seconds for this information to get from GB miners all the way to slush pool. Makes sense, right? I don't know where GB miners are, but slush pools in Europe, there isn't that many, uh, there aren't that many uh, mining pools in Europe, so... Uh, wherever GP might, where is GP miners? Can we go to GP miners? Um, no, doesn't tell us. It doesn't tell us where GP miners is. GP miners. No, doesn't say where GP miners is. Okay, well. We, we can definitely find out somehow where GP miners is and it will tell us like, it might give us a hint why the, why it took some time to get from here to here. Um, yeah. And so that's why this can happen. Orphan blocks can happen. 
And the rule of thumb is wait for at least six confirmations. So, for example, cryptocurrency exchanges, they will have a threshold. They will, you know, they will not confirm, they will not send you your money if you exchange like Bitcoins for um, Ethers or I don't know, like Bitcoin Cash or something like that. Uh, if you exchange, if you do that exchange, they won't send you your money right away. And that's the reason why, because they are waiting to make sure that even after the transaction has one confirmation, they still wait until a certain number of confirmations, which might be like five or six confirmations, uh, for based on their regulations or based on their, um, terms and conditions. They will wait a couple of confirmations because they're afraid they want to minimize the risk of double spending. They want to minimize the risk that this transaction that they just did with you, it will end up in one of these orphan blocks. And, you know, yes, there's like two, three, four confirmations, but at the same time, there's a parallel chain, <coughs> excuse me. And then that trend, those transactions will be reversed back to the map pool. And they've already given you the other cryptocurrency that you were after, and they can't take it back from you. Unless you, of course, you know, they contact you and they say, oh, you'll probably give it back to them, but they're, they're not sure about that. So they don't, they don't want that risk. So there you go. That's what orphan blocks are. Um, check out this this uh, website. Have a look and see see what kind of examples you can find here. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, enjoy blockchains.